Yeah, hey everyone, Brian with you from the Game Cabinet. We are playing some more Civ 6, continuing here with our second chance rounds. We are on group stage three right now. We have Thomas in Sweden in first and second place, and Canada not too far behind. Ironically, Scythia and uh, Sweden actually probably had the worst starts because they were right on top of each other. I mean, except for maybe Ottomans because their start was kind of weird up here because they were pretty much trapped in. Although with them grabbing Lisbon, that might be... I'm not gonna say enough, but I mean, they definitely need it. Like, the spread here is fairly even. Like, talking less than, I mean, basically 200 points from top to bottom. Like, what, 200 and, we can actually add this, 206, uh, 17. 217 points from top to bottom, which is pretty balanced, all things considered. Uh, the best start had to go to Korea, but Korea is just an absolutely terrible spot. If we look at yields, what are we looking at here? I don't think anyone's close to rockets yet. Come on, I should have clicked before we actually, it's like once the game starts like registering, it's just like, ugh. Uh, so science is not looking too strong for anyone. Solimon's in first. So, now we are going to 315. I forgot to put the timer. I forgot to put the timer, but we will end the game at 315. Will he be able to shoot the rockets off by 315? I'm gonna have to say probably not. With only less than 200 science on turn 181, that just does not seem likely. Yeah, I mean, there's going to have to be a lot of catch up. Let's see where he's at, though. So he is getting chemistry. Once he gets chemistry, that's going to jump up his science by a lot. Uh, we do not see rocket sites. They're going to be somewhere up in there. But I mean, getting chemistry here might jump him up to three, four hundred, depending on what he does after that. Uh, Kanda's also not that far behind. I mean, really, in the scheme of things, everyone's pretty close. What was that for? See, state emergency for Ottomans. So Ottomans might actually be fighting some people finally. Hey, we finally have an Australian Ottoman war. This took a while. Australia, unfortunately, never got a war declared against them. So Australia is going straight for Adana. Uh, how are Ottomans now that they have it? They're still in last place, even with Lisbon. Kind of expected a little bit better. I kind of did because you got multiple districts there. Although, and we still don't know this. I know I've mentioned this, but do pillage districts count towards your score? I don't know. I would. How do we actually know? <laughs> I was gonna say I think they don't but they might I, this is one of those weird things that you just gotta like pay attention to when you're playing the game but just really rarely is something you can pay attention to uh, so that means Sweden and Scythia are no longer at war with each other yeah they ended up peacing out then because they're now on the same side um, Sweden just going and sacrificing their knight to do literally one damage on the walls you know hey I, sure 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 Australia is not in a terrible spot here either yeah, he's in fourth, but not by a lot. I mean, he's still got a lot of room over there. He could take over a couple city-states. If he could potentially go grab Adana, which doesn't have walls. I mean, and he's got the diggers out, too. And he's got digger cores. I mean, that's 82 combat strength right now. That's going to do a lot of damage against 54. Like, so it's what? Negative, I think, 15, 16? When you go and attack city walls? But there's no walls. I think you still get it. Yeah, actually, just look at this. He's just destroying. He would destroy Adana. Even these diggers right here. Why, why does it not work? Why does it only work when I click on this one? Oh, maybe it has to be, like, on their turn or something. Yeah, like, even these diggers are doing massive damage to the walls here. So, I think Adana's gonna fall over here to Australia. And then Maui's here. What does he do? 76, ignore movement penalties creates a random bonus luxury resource oh yeah oh uh, yeah i mean that's fine that's fine honestly if we're talking about ranking i would probably put uh anasai is probably the we weakest i think uh hippolyta hippolyta whatever however you say her name i actually would have ranked her really low but we had her in our spain game and i really realized how powerful she can be just because like she basically just can just stand in place and survive and live and just fight everyone just because that extra 20 healing a turn is ridiculously powerful at keeping her high hp so not necessarily going on the offensive but just standing back and defending is just so good I still really like Kimiko. I think Sinbad depends on your game and depends on the map, but I think Sinbad is probably overpowered depending on the game, depending on the map. So I think you have to rank him one conditionally. I think next to that, it's probably Himiko. Just that plus 10 combat strength is really, really, really good. And then being able to get like free city states, free stuff is so good too. 
Mulan, I would probably rank a little lower. Yeah, Mulan would probably be near the bottom. The twins, eh. I actually maybe rank Arthur at the bottom. Just because, like, creating the, I mean, he's good with his melee strength, but his ability just sucks. The fact that the unit dies after, like, 12 turns is just, like, terrible. Because it's like, hey, I mean, the one use in which, like, it would be really, really good, and I don't know how it works, but if you uh, levy, levy a city-state and then Arthur the troops, would they then become yours? It doesn't really matter because the levy would eventually disappear, but like actually wasting your own combat strength or wasting your own units is kind of like, eh. it's like, hey, I can get a whole bunch of troops here. Uh, I can upgrade all of my troops to temporarily, you know, go take something and then immediately lose all of them. So I can't defend it. Like, I don't know. It just doesn't seem that strong. All right. So Australia, I have no idea what you ended up doing here. Adana got walls. You just completely screwed it up. And now you're going for Lisbon. And I think Ottomans are actually going to survive this emergency war. <sighs> all right. All right. Canada settled over here on Aztec land. That's good. That's what he needs. He needs to settle in some of these other areas. He is cl getting close to 100 points down. He really needs another era right now. And he needs a Dark Age here, Golden Age, and then potentially flip. The other option, no one's gonna win a science victory. Yeah, it's just not gonna happen, man. We're at turn 200 still. It's just, I just don't see it happening. All right, so what's big about this one is we're looking, how far are we? We're still only tier one, but Actually, no one has coal yet. Oh, crap. <laughs> no, we got to see meteors or sorry, comets. So comets should hit the freaking coast coastline. It should happen. You know what's funny? That's going to now happen in my single player games, too, unless I just like I copied the. Um, actually, that's a very good point. I should double check here. Uh, I did copy the XML file just in case they screwed something up. But let's make sure that. Comet strike, yeah. Oh, I forgot to do the targeted one. I only did it for the random comet strike. Uh-oh. Can you change the XML file while playing the game? Does that do weird things? I would imagine so. So we're not going to see the comet. The targeted one is not going to hit the water. And actually, in the scheme of things, I think that's fine. Because it only does one tile damage. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm okay with the comet, the targeted one hitting land only. Okay. Okay, that was a good mistake then. I'm good. I'm good with that. So Lisbon is starting to lose walls, but I don't I wish we could see how much longer this emergency had. Like even if it showed us. Even if it showed us, man, like when it started, that would be useful. Certain things about the mod it would be really nice if we could see. And I'm wondering. Sorry, I'm just now in this modding standpoint, this modding thought process. So there's got to be something in the game, in one of the files, that says, hey, if you're part of an emergency, show the visual for the emergency. So then, theoretically, there would be a way to put always show, so the emergency always shows whether or not we're a part of it or not. And, like, quite frankly, I think that would be great to have even as a single player, just to always be able to see the emergencies that are happening and seeing what's happening. Like, it's just, like, it would be worth knowing, and I don't think that would be cheesy in any standpoint. It's just like, oh, hey, Australia is currently winning. The only thing that would be weird about it is I don't think it would provide visual, but it would be kind of weird if, like, there was an emergency with civs that we've not met yet. That would be the only weird thing, because it would be like, uh, unknown Civ has an emergency declared by an unknown Civ, and three other unknown Civs are all, you know, in on it. Like, that's the only time it would get rather weird. And that would only be a single-player game, for the record. But, anyways. Australia popping out Broadway. Oh, what's culture looking like, by the way? Australia's good on culture, so... He might be getting some of those culture wonders, and he actually has rocket sites popping out. Interesting. Anyone else? No, no one has... At least no one's gotten a rocket site finished. Scythia's building them. Canada is building them. Oh, Canada. We want to see you win. Show up, everyone. And prove you're not the worst Civ. Hey, it rhymes. Boom. What's up? <laughs> What's up? That's our new, that's our new Canada uh, theme song for Civ 6. Dude, Korea, I'm so disappointed. She's catching up. 
She's not out of this. Just because she still has a lot of land to settle. Although Sithi has actually come over here. And Sithi's starting to do a really good job. All right, this is going to be big here, too. I'm intrigued to see what happens here with this era. All right, Lisbon's completely surrounded. I don't think it's going to matter, though, because 79 combat strength here, I don't really think is going to make much of a difference. Especially with the walls there. And these are, yeah, Renaissance walls. And there's no um, uh, CG units there. So I don't see it flipping. Okay. Gah! I saw Canada first and my heart jumped for half a beat. Uh, so let's see. Sweden got another normal age. Dang it. So they didn't get a dark age out of it. So Canada's not going to be able to flip anything. I know I'm supposed to be impartial, but you know what? You know what? So then why am I rooting for literally the worst Civ in the game to make it to the knockout rounds? Because that won't be entertaining. <laughs> uh, shut up. Shut up. Don't bring your logic into this game. Come on. What do you think this is? A strategy game, man? <laughs> uh, well, who got Dark Ages there? Scythia and Aztec. That Scythia Dark Age could be bad. Yeah, actually it is. That's actually really bad. And that's going to flip over to, right now, Ottomans. Can he stop it? And by he, can she? No. It's going to flip. Hmm. Interesting. Neapolis might also potentially flip here. Probably Mariv is going to have to flip first, I would think. But I would definitely say that this one is definitely under threat. I mean, it's only 4.5. Or it's already positive 4.5, and that's without a governor, so maybe not. Still, is that going to make enough of a difference to knock Scythia out of first? Nah. Uh, uh, yeah, actually. But not into third. It'll be just enough to knock him out of first. How are they doing down here? Because that could be a bad thing is if they start losing some of these towns. Uh, and apparently they're at war now again. Yep, she's now at war again with Scythia. Or sorry, Sweden. Which number one and number two are at war with each other. Which quite frankly, that's always good to see. Anytime you're like, like you always want to see, you know, the top two civs fight against each other. Because, you know, it kind of gives the uh, opportunity for everyone else to come in. Because if they burn all their troops fighting each other, then guess what? Canada can come in here with Arthur and just start killing. And then that's when I started killing. Uh, now you're at war. Canada did not declare war. Who are you at war with? Canada doesn't declare war on anyone. Yeah, that's true. That is true. And I don't think he denounced anyone either. So, although there is other Casas Belli. So, you know, he, there are other ways he can declare war. Aztecs still not doing great. How'd the religious game look in? Oh, uh, it's not. I mean, we could look here, but... So, Canada did end up getting all of Sweden. And yet, despite that... God, Canada's literally doing everything he needs to do right now. Although, Zorstrom, that is... Scythia. So, Scythia has all of Australia. Man, Canada's already now in fourth. Dang. Or fifth? Wow! Dude, Canada went from third to fifth. It's very close. Now, 100-point difference, though, between uh, the top two and everyone else. That's a little unfortunate. Australia's still... I mean, they're still looking good. They really are. Unfortunately, they didn't get Adana. Adana would have gone a long way towards helping them. Because if they could have grabbed Adana, Lisbon might have flipped. They might have been able to win the emergency. And then at that point, like, they're looking really strong. Maybe even could have gone and conquered it themselves. Mirav still hasn't flipped. They did put a person there. Uh, is she... Rolling the correct policies. Uh, not really, but kind of. They also changed Raj. Gold from each city state you're suzerain of. Trade routes to... Your trade routes to ally city states provide food and production. Wait, that's not it. That's not Raj. Science, faith... Gold from each city state you're suzerain of. Trade outs to city states get extra gold. So they added the extra two gold. So apparently people mentioned that the reason they changed democracy is because you can't spy on your allies anymore. And so the whole idea is people are getting less allies. And so now we had to buff democracy. I think it's absolutely completely stupid to be straight up honest with you. I think democracy is already 10 to 10. I don't think you need to spy on your allies, you know, and I definitely don't think they needed to buff democracy. And Raj was hot trash, so a buff on that is okay, but still not worth it. And here's the thing. 
I personally would still rather, I think, ally and trade with an ally than trade with the city state. Like worst case scenario, like for example, if you're Ottoman, why would you want to trade with Zanzibar? Like if you're allied here with Australia, you know, I mean, just don't ally with, you know, Sweden and Canada and go spy on them if you really want to go steal money, but then just ally with uh, Australia and just send all your trade routes from to there. And it's just way better. But I have to say democracy, out of all the governments, like, well, eh, eh, I was gonna say, I think at this point, oligarchy is almost a must take, although there is some argument for classical republic. I think the middle tier government or the tier two governments are probably the most balanced, although monarchy probably not. Although housing per wall level isn't terrible and the influence points isn't terrible, but straight up honest, I'd still rather have merchant republic or theocracy, both of these are just way better. Um, and then tier three is, or tier four is pretty balanced. But here, like, very rarely, like, I'd say once in every 20 games, I might do fascism, if that. And, like, I almost never do communism. Like, if you're going for a science victory, you'd much rather have democracy because you really don't need the 10% science. And the production persistent with governors, governors really isn't that much. Democracy is just 100 times better. 100 times better. Anyways, let's keep advancing. You know what would be interesting is that you could actually choose your policy slots for your government. And so then the only difference is, is the bonuses. That actually would be interesting because like I have to say 99% of the time, I don't say 99% of the time, I would say 80% of the time, I pick my government based on the bonuses. Or sorry, based on the policy slots, not based on the bonuses. So it would be rather interesting if you could choose how many of each. And maybe there's like a little bit of variation, like, you know, monarchy, you have to have like two military policies, you know? So there's a little bit of differences between the two, but then it, it, it's actually based on the bonuses versus on, you know, because like, I don't know, it's just, I don't know. But then again, would you ever not choose oligarchy at that point? Good point. <laughs> you want the wonders, eh, but it's 10%. It's not, eh, eh, I don't know. I don't know. The funny thing is, I think we chose oligarchy in our Spain game and we were building wonders and we weren't really fighting anyone except barbarians, but I still went straight for oligarchy. Probably out of habit. Um, what happened up here? Everything is pillaged. Also, also, ah, still got a ways to go. We still got over a hundred turns. Oh my gosh. And we're at 17 minutes. This game slowed down a lot. There might be some time skip. We might end up putting a pause here and let the game take off camera. We'll see. There's not really a whole lot happening. Thomas is shooting off the first rocket, though. I mean, we've had some wars and we've had some city flips, but like nothing super major. Nothing super major. And this is what like this is. This is the problem with dramatic age mode off. Is it just like at a certain point in the game? It's just like, OK, I mean, we're just going to sit here and hope that like what they go to war with each other i mean even if they go to war with each other they're not gonna be able to conquer each other so actually now it looks like korea and australia are both shooting off rockets as well right we saw korea shooting it could have sworn i saw korea shooting one yeah there you go and then Scythia was shooting one how about canada canada is our boy he is gonna be able to shoot one here in one turn yeah what is with all the pillaging here no I was just wondering if maybe like the uh, somehow we missed the solar storm, but no. Really? You're shooting in Ottawa? When you could have shot it in Vancouver? Uh, okay, I guess it's slightly better production there. All right, fine. What really sucks is St. John has 20 more production. What's your government type, Canada? Mmm, democracy. Hey! That's actually really good. Can we, by chance, click on him and see his trade routes? No. Dang it. It would be interesting to see his trade routes to see if he's actually trading with his allies and getting the boost. Now, I'm probably imagining he's not sending any trade routes from Ottawa. I'm just I'm just kind of imagining that he's not doing that. I don't know what would lead me to believe that, but you know, it just it seems like it just seems like a step too far. A, a, like the AI is just too good at that point if they can actually, you know, utilize democracy or their government properly. So who is winning currently on the rockets? 
Looks like Tomris, Montezuma, and Scythia are all like neck and neck. You're at five turns. You're at eight turns. Six turns. So right now, Aztecs are actually shooting the rockets off first. And Montezuma is not in the top two. Now there's Korea. So that's interesting. Do they have enough science, though? And I honestly have to say no. Christina's at 300. But, like, like 200 science right now? What is going on, dude? Like, there's no way he's going to be able to finish this in time. Because you're almost 50 turns from the end already. And same thing with Korea. Like, you're at 280, which isn't much better. He does have nanotechnology. But, like, he's still got to get all the way up here. And that's just going to be stupid. And, oh, man. I almost can guarantee you Smart Materials is that one. I can almost guarantee it, which just sucks. Yeah. Absolutely sucks. So then, Suleiman is about the only possible one to finish this. But even 300 is still not enough, man. Mm-mm. And he doesn't have uh, Moon. He has Mars, but no one has Moon, as far as we can see. So they're going to shoot the first one off, and then there's going to be a pause. So, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be score-based, it looks like. That's kind of unfortunate. So, all right, here we go. We're about to get a new era. Once again, we're going to call this one Key. Only because we're rooting for Canada, and we really want to see them flip something. <laughs> uh, come on, Canada. Watch him get a Dark Age. Canada gets a Dark Age here. I think we're probably safe to say I don't think he's making a comeback. Now, Ottomans are looking pretty dang good, dude. He's looking pretty okay. But he's in last place. I mean, I still have to say, this spread here is 200 points. Under 200 points from top to bottom. This has been the most balanced game I think we have ever seen. Which, keep in mind, there are a lot of very, like, good sieves. Other than Canada, I mean, this is a pretty decent uh, group of sieves here. So, like, to the point where anyone besides Canada wins, we wouldn't be surprised. Even Sweden, like, I wouldn't be super surprised with Sweden winning. But I would kind of imagine it would be because they got a lot of wonders and stuff and a lot of culture, which they're not really doing. All right, so what happened? Australia, Sweden, oh, Canada. Come on, bro. Uh, Aztec got a heroic age, or sorry, golden age. Yeah, heroic age. And then normal age for Korea and Suleiman. God dang it, Canada. Uh, why, buddy? Why? Now, is your heroic age going to make a difference? Nah, no. No, no. So yeah, we're basically kind of at like, what's what's a good term for, we're basically just like, nothing's gonna happen for the next 50 turns. <laughs> we're just kind of in wait and see mode, I suppose would be the best way to describe it. Okay, come on, at this point we're rooting for the world climate. <laughs> for entertainment purposes, we need apocalypse mode to happen. Although, unfortunately, no one has coal yet. Are you... <laughs> uh, the irony in this game continues. We change the XML files because we want to change some stuff with the comet strikes, but then we don't get to see comet strikes because no one gets coal because of the tech shuffle. <laughs> How perfect is that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean... Uh, at least oil is visible. They have coal. Is there no coal on the map? What the actual heck, people? No, he has coal. You have coal. So what, you're just not burning coal units then? You're building a factory, which means power plants are incoming. But no one has actually built a power plant yet. Oh, finally. Okay, someone built a power plant. And that someone I'd imagine is, I have no idea. I imagine it's Ottomans. So the power plants then in the factories must have just been in a weird spot. <laughs> but hey, hey, they're, they're all trying to make up for lost times here because they're all starting to pop them out. Canada, Canada, speaking of which, we need some power plants down here, man. He's gotten the uranium. All right, Canada, I, I believe, I believe. I, I see what he's doing here. Canada, realizing that there's no way he's going to come back, he's got to build a bunch of nukes and he's got to start nuking Sweden and Scythia. I'm down for it, Canada. It's a very Canada move, I have to say. It's, it's happening, man. It is happening. We are claiming this into existence. It is going to happen. Canada is going to... Don't talk to me. Don't talk to me, Canada. <laughs> Come 
come on, dude. Like, really? <laughs> Remember when Canada was in second place and we were all hopeful? Yeah, about that. Although, once again, it's still a 200-point spread. So, just a couple really good meteors hitting literally everyone on the map except Canada, and he's right in it. And then he starts shooting some nukes off at the other people, and, like, life is great. Life is great. Um, Cynthia is now losing, uh, Solcha. Shouldn't lose it, though. Really should not lose it. And if they do lose it, like, really, girl? She's still in first? No, she's in second. I mean, it's only a 70 point. Korea is catching up, though. She finally is making this start work for her. But, the thing is, she's somewhat out of room. She didn't do, no, Perth was Australia. Yeah, she's kind of out of room at this point. There's not too many cities left for her. So she needs to grab Perth, and she really needs Solcha to flip. So as long as Scythia doesn't let uh, Solcha flip, should be okay. They should be able to hold off uh, Korea. Now, Australia is looking pretty dang good still, but where are they at? 845? Uh, I mean, it's under 100 still. Literally, Montezuma, Korea, Australia are all within 100 points of second place. Uh, hello. Oh, never mind. I, I was like, what happened to uh, 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 Scythia? She dropped. No, she's still in second place, Brian. Army-wise, pretty even. Death Robots, I don't think we've seen. Anyone have uranium yet? No. Oil? Yes. So we should be queuing here pretty quickly. I say that. We're probably only going to get a few wonders, man. Or a few uh, 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 meteors, comets. Man, I don't know. We might need to put a pause in this. Because we're still like 50 turns away at this point. And we're nowhere close to the meteors falling, the comets falling. And quite frankly, there's really not much happening in the game. And it's like, what are we going to talk about? Oh, you know what? You know what we have yet to talk about? I've mentioned it, and I mentioned I was probably going to talk about it, but never did. Cyberpunk. So I've been thoroughly enjoying it. I'm still, like, I'm probably, like, 80 hours into the game yet. And I've basically been doing pretty much everything in the game. Uh, I've been playing it on my Series X, and it's been working absolutely fine. Uh, they did just update it again yesterday, Friday the 18th. Uh, and, oh, my God. It, like, like, literally, it, like... I don't know, the frame rate I think is now, I've been playing it actually, cause you can change two different modes on console. You can go performance mode or you can do uh, performance or quality. And I've been doing it on quality. Performance mode had like this nice little 60 frames per second, but I was like, eh, I, I like the quality. I think the quality just looks better and I was okay with the 30 frames, but it's just so much smoother now. So I don't know what they did with it. I don't know. Some people said they've been seeing less civilians walking around. I think there might be less cars. Now, don't get me wrong. I think there's definitely things wrong with the game. But for me, it has been the most engrossing game I think I have ever played in my life. I would not recommend it on older consoles for sure. But if you have a decent PC or if you have a GeForce PC where you could do the streaming GeForce Now thing or, you know, you have like one of the newer consoles, it's definitely, I think, a really, really good game. Like people, I've seen some people compare it to Mass Effect. Like people are like, hey, this is the first game since Mass Effect. And I 100% agree. It's like the first game since Mass Effect that has like inspired me or has like just completely engrossed me. Like I've just never been engrossed. Like here's the thing. It took me 18 hours to level my athletics from level one to two athletics. Like a lot of all your skills in the game just like go up as you use them. So like the more you stealth, the more your stealth levels up. Athletics, you level up by like climbing and running and stuff like that. It took me 18 hours to get to level two, which is kind of hilarious because I have been walking around everywhere. Just like I've been walking around the entire world, just like looking around at the sites and just experiencing things. And like, once again, yeah, they're bugs, but like any open world game has bugs. And I hate the fact that like, I don't know. I feel like people have been crapping on it a little more than it deserves. Um, I understand it would be really frustrating if you went and bought the game and then couldn't play it. 100% agree with it. But, like, there's a certain point where, like, the subreddit is just, like, oh, my God. Because, like, people are, like, oh, I can't do this. Like, uh, I can't, like, uh, uh, have sex with every single person on the game. Zero of ten. And it's just, like, oh, my God. You guys are getting, like, a little crazy. Where it's just, like, complaining about, like, little every little nitpick. And it's almost as if people expected this to just be, like you know, life-changing of a game. And it was good. I mean, I definitely think it's one of the best stories I've played. Once again, very engrossing. Definitely the most engrossing game I've played since Mass Effect, so. And Mass Effect is a great example of a game that, quite frankly, technologically was good, but not great. Like, 
the big thing about Mass Effect 2 is Mass Effect 2 took all the problems in Mass Effect 1 and fixed it. It made the game so much more enjoyable. The combat, everything about it was just so streamlined. But Mass Effect 1, if you ever go back and play it, it's kind of like janky, you know, the the just a lot about it. Just like, eh, this is like kind of interesting, you know. All the planets, there were just a bunch of empty planets that had like nothing on it that you could drive around, which is kind of cool, but at the same time, kind of pointless. And so like Mass Effect 2 just like smoothed everything out and I think this is a good example of like where uh, 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 cyberpunk is at is it's an extraordinarily good game that has quirks and flaws and man I like there's so much potential for the game like just like like here's the thing like the game is so dense like the map itself is pretty gigantic uh and it doesn't seem that big but like when you're walking around and you're seeing all the different like things you can find and all the different like areas and like all these different uh uh, uh you'll walk and all of a sudden you'll find an alleyway and the alleyway has a whole bunch of crap going on in it and it's just like it's so crazy just all the different stuff that's happening in the game it's just so dense and like they could just really do a lot with it like they could start filling in some more of the buildings if they wanted which already a lot of the buildings are um uh, interactable like you can go in them or like you can go on top of them or like their storylines in it like a lot of them a uh, surprisingly amount but they could definitely open up more they could add in a bunch more uh you know sellers that needs things though like the biggest complaint though is it definitely needs like you need to be able to upgrade your tattoos or buy more tattoos change your hairstyle you know uh some of the ui quirks are pretty terrible like how like i can't view what an outfit's gonna look like before i buy it from the store that it's just like stuff like that just you know it just needs some love um, honestly, I kind of wish they just would have waited and released it next year and released it only on the newer consoles, which, you know, people would have absolutely hated and lost their minds if it would have happened. But, you know, I think ultimately that would have been a better product. But I definitely like I, the thing I hate. Oh, and the music. The music is freaking killer, which Mandalorian last episode music. Oh, my God, which the episode itself was amazing. But like Mandalorian, we could talk about for hours as well. But I'm not going to talk about that because that's a little less spoiler or a little more spoiler ish. But anyways, um, music in the game, the sound in the game is just like 10 to 10. And I think the combat's actually a lot of fun once you start leveling up. Like I have like some smart pistol now that is just so freaking fun because it shoots around. And then I have like the mantis blades, which my arms turn into. And it's just, it's a lot of fun just rolling around and killing people um, or not killing them. All right. So anyways, enough about that. We got nine turns left. Uh, how are we looking here? We are not quite there. Let's wait for this next era. And then we're probably going to put a pause in. There's really not much happening. And this this is why we play with Dramatic Ages, just FYI. And I'm going to keep saying it, but we're definitely going to turn Dramatic Ages on for the knockout rounds. I wonder if there's a way I can adjust the XML files on that and make it a little less punishing. Like, even if the city-states, or sorry, if the free cities did just, you know, half as much loyalty pressure, I think it would be a lot better. Just because, like, the AI losing cities, I think, is entertaining. I think that's what really makes it entertaining is seeing whether or not they're going to be able to lose cities. I don't know. Maybe making it 50% like less loyalty pressure might be a little too big of a nerf. How we doing when it comes to science? Yeah, everyone's already shot off the first one, which is exactly what we thought. No one's close there. No one's close there. Eh, kind of close there, but not really. Tomaris with the diplomacy potential. Still got a ways to go, though. And I would imagine the Statue of Liberty has been built by this point in the game. I would imagine. I am currently not seeing it. So maybe it has not been built. So that plus another era, if it has not been built, could potentially mean a victory, a diplomacy victory, which is a word we have not heard in quite some time. Yeah, I don't see it. Uh, I'm actually totally down with this. Uh, pan uh, sorry, this Golden Gate. Yeah, I'm totally down with that one. I think it's pretty okay. For the AI, I'm all for it. It's one of the better ones. Yeah, I don't see. I don't see statue. I might be missing it, and you guys might be yelling at me that I'm missing it, but I'm totally, I, I'm, I'm, okay. Forget Canada. I am on the Scythia Diplomacy Victory Train now. <laughs> uh, I'm things that are never going to happen. Canada winning and that happening. Hey, at least Canada's not in last. Dude, look at this balance, though. Still, still under 200 points from top to bottom. 
by far the most balanced game we have ever seen, I think, in this AI only series. I don't think like ever we have ever seen a game where top to bottom it's been with 200 points. Like never. And partly, I think the reason that this has happened is no one has been able to war anyone. <laughs> essentially so because of that and the lands were pretty well balanced so because of that everyone's just kind of stuck fairly close together uh is this still the top two yes is that gonna change probably not i just don't think there's enough wonders to catch up and he's probably at his limit when it comes well he is building the great zimbabwe so that's another 15 points uh natural history museum and he is building the panama canal so that's an extra 30 points Still a ways to go though, but I don't think he's gonna be able to get much more religious points. I think he's kind of at his cap there So then he's gonna need more cities, which is feasible Especially depending on how this next era happens, but yeah, I kind of feel like I kind of feel like Scythia is pretty well Okay, here's the other thing depending on how this next era happens Miriv could flip back So that is always a possibility. All right information age Let's do this. Golden Age for Ottomans, so that's not going to flip. Korea got a Dark Age, everyone else got a Normal Age. So there goes Canada, and the last chance we had a Canada winning. Yay. Uh, Panama Canal is going to get finished by Aztecs. So right now it's going to come down between Aztecs, I think, and Scythia. I think Sweden's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, mm, they should be fine. They should be fine. They're also building... The Eiffel, they're not going to get you, but I think they're okay. I mean, unless they got invaded right now, they're currently at war with Scythia and also Aztecs. I wonder what that's for. Joint war, perhaps? Are you friendly with Aztecs? No, not really. You're actually at war with Aztecs, too. So, yeah, I don't think, I don't think there's anything that's going to uh, cause Christina to drop. Now, I will say, if this ever happens, which is looking more and more unlikely. It could be catastrophic. It could. I mean, if if Thomas loses her capital to a meteor, Montezuma probably slots into second. It is feasible. Um, I guess at this point, we might as well just chill for another 25 turns, because, like, yeah. So, let's see. What else can we talk about? Christmas is coming. Merry Christmas, everyone. I hope you guys have a happy Christmas. Oh, I will mention this. Emily got a new job. Woo! So that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Um, the good thing about it is she's actually going to be working from home now for at least the COVID future. So I don't know what's going to happen post-COVID if she's going to um, um, have to go into the office. I, it sounds like she will once COVID's over, which... She's working for a really, really good company. I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, so it's a pretty exciting job. So yay. <laughs> the fact that Brian lost his job due to COVID is a little less punishing right now. And hopefully the American government, by the time this video goes live, decides to actually pass another stimulus help. Even though it shouldn't be called stimulus because it's not stimulus. It's actually freaking providing people with what they need. Stimulus would be propping up billionaires and whatever, 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 whatever. Not going to get into politics. Although, you know, this is a game about politics. But, you know, this is a game about fun politics. You know, where things like unemployment and pandemics don't happen although can we talk about why pandemics are not in the game like seriously they have a whole pandemic game mode in the game but it's only multiplayer why the heck is black death not introduced why have they not added it in like it would be so interesting so interesting if like the black death scenario was actually something you could turn on and maybe not as power, because like, here's the thing with the Black Death, you basically just lose. And so I wouldn't make it like, you know, the Black Death where basically you just die. Like, because no pandemic has completely wiped out humanity yet. Yet, I say. You know, for the most part, even with the Spanish flu and the Black Death, it was pretty bad. But, you know, governments didn't necessarily get toppled because of it. But, you know, there was a huge loss of production and productivity and money and stuff like that. And so having a mode where, yeah, it was just going crazy and maybe early games. I don't know what it is with Black Death. Is it like, is it like a religious unit that counteracts it? Or is it like doctors? I'm trying to think. Is it like a plague doctor? I think it's like the plague doctor, right? But it would be cool to have play doctors, which, you know, upgrade to like regular doctors and stuff like that. I think that would be really, really interesting. Give me that for game modes. Although we only have, what, one or two game modes left in the game? Uh, so Civ 6, New Frontier. 
how many game modes are left in the game? And I mean, I'm sure they already know what they're doing, but I can still hope. Uh, one game mode, so we have two more game modes coming left. So what's left with the game? We got two new civilizations, three new leaders, two new game modes, one district, two buildings, one map, and new world wonders. So, a decent amount of stuff still. I'm gonna be kind of sad when March runs around and we're kind of done. You think they're gonna do another expansion? So here is the thing, Civ Five had two expansions, right? Civ Four had three, like major expansions, I think is what it was. So we're basically looking at Civ Six territory now. Or sorry, Civ Seven territory. We're getting to that point where I, I just wonder, I wonder, especially, here's the thing though, with COVID, I would not be shocked if they do a fourth expansion. If there was no COVID, I would definitely say we're looking at Civ 7 territory. But with COVID, cause it's just, I mean, I'm sure they're just a little bit behind. They're just not getting as much stuff done. But here's the thing though. What are you gonna do with another expansion? Are you really gonna add more Civs into the game? You have 40 something freaking Civs. Like, now here's the problem. Civ 7 is just gonna get crapped on when it comes out. <laughs> Like, there's no chance it won't. Because you're going from, like, 46 civs, like, 50-something civs, to, like, there's no way they're going to launch the game with 50 civs. It's going to have, like, 20 to 30. And people, it's just going to be crap. <laughs> if for that alone, people are going to hate it. Uh, if that alone. I kind of feel bad for Axis. But that's, like, that's, like, the civ lifespan. Is the game comes out, their new Civ game comes out, everyone hates on it because it's not as good as the previous because it doesn't have whatever. And then by the time they release the last expansion, people love it. And then they announce the new one, which everyone gets irrationally excited for. <laughs> it's like Cyberpunk. And then they hate on it because it's not, you know, the previous one. So, how are you sieging that down, by the way? You had one unit there. Odd. Odd to say the release. That would actually be interesting. Maybe a hero that just like sieges a, a city. You just have a hero and then just having the hero by the city just sieges it down. Like he has crap combat strength, but he's just able to siege the city down single-handedly. I don't even know what kind of hero that would be, but it, you know, just throwing out random ideas here because what else are we doing with life? We're trying to freaking get this freaking seven so we can see some freaking meteors fall in the next 15 turns. Sorry, 12 turns. God, this game, ah. This particular one has been kind of frustrating because there's just not been a lot happening. Still top two, although Montezuma is now points away because he got both of those wonders done and he got something else too. Is there any else, anything else happening? No. If we're looking here at the religion, Empire size Thomas is bigger. Great people, about equal. Religion is where Montezuma Oh, Thomas has the wonders, though. So it's Eris score and religion that is basically keeping Montezuma close. The problem is, like, I just don't know he can get enough religion. Like, like I just don't think there's too many points left for that. So what he needs is he needs Scythia to lose the town. But that doesn't seem likely. And she did put a couple another, a couple more down. And there's a potential she could grab this and put another city down. This is close, though. I have to throw that out there. Oh god, the rock bands. I need to find that XML file and turn that off. I am still very much down for, I'm gonna record it at some point myself and be like, success, fail, lose. You know what? It should actually, no. All I need to do is actually find the recording. Cause there should be a file of the recording. All I have to do is just uh, uh, put my own version in there. And I can very easily render that out and make that work. I'm sure it's just an MP3. Would it be an MP3? That's a good question. I don't think it would be an AAC file. It's gotta be an MP3, right? MP3 being, you know, usually like the, uh, the most, like the smallest file size, right? That's why MP3, I don't know, that's a good question. Nothing else I could literally, I wonder what happens if you just delete it. If you just delete it, if it just like goes away or if it errors out because it's looking for something that doesn't exist. Uh, so we do have some death robots happening. The rockets weren't happening. I mean, Christina got the third one, but yeah, we knew that wasn't gonna happen. We're down to six turns right now. 
Montezuma is now 16 points behind. So, Tomaris and Sith, uh, Tomaris and Sweden have actually held on to the lead almost the entire game. That's interesting. And once again, I gotta say, everyone played this really, really well. It's now a little over 200 point spread between top and bottom. But still, this is definitely the closest game we have ever seen. Yeah. I gotta give everyone credit on this one. They did, everyone did a really good job. And honestly, it comes down to the fact that no one really <laughs> sucked. <laughs> everyone was just good enough to hold on to their cities and everything else like that. So Canada's trying to do some spreads. But I don't, we don't even really see, cause, oh, you know what happened? Aztec was catching up via Faith, but then they started getting rock bands. Cause you can see that's their rock bands making music right now. And so because of that, they stopped using their faith on the apostles and that stopped the religious spread. And that probably got, <gasps> he did it. He did it. Okay, so keep in mind, it's not 315. It's turn 316 that we look at the score, but he's ahead. <gasps> oh no, not Tomaris. I mean, I would rather see Aztec Tomaris to go through, but like, I mean, you gotta give Sweden credit here. And Sweden, like, Sweden's not bad. She's really not bad. Dude. Do you have, like, a wonder popped out or something? Dude, she needs something. Wow. Wow. Last second. So this game literally did nothing the entire freaking game until, like, the last four turns. And look, Canada's in first place. Woo, Canada, we called it. We totally said you were gonna make it through. And no one can prove otherwise. Yeah. Oh, Canada, you are the best sieve around. <laughs> oh, poor Canada. Cynthia, it was nice knowing you. <laughs> oh, that's just great. All right, well, um, we got Aztec and we got Sweden moving on to the next round. We are going to watch and see whether or not it hits. I think that one hit. I think that one hit. But what's interesting is it hit, but it didn't do anything. Oh, interesting. Okay. So yeah, you're on 316, Christina and Montezuma moved through. I mean, it didn't change anything because it looked like it was gonna happen anyways, but like, can we still talk about how hilarious that is? All right, so Christina was in first, Montezuma was in second, Scythia was in third. I mean, placements don't really matter on this so much. Yeah, okay, so it is actually hitting the water now. It doesn't change the terrain, though. I might have to change another XML file to make that work. Hmm. Interesting. So Korea was fourth. Yep. John Curtin was fifth. Kind of disappointed here with John Curtin and with Ottomans. Both of them better civs in the game. Both of them more warlike civs in the game. And neither of them really ever declared war on each other. Um, wait, Sweden's in first, Brian. Oh, I copied it. That's why. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Well, that is interesting. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like, comment, let me know what you think. As always, hit the subscribe button, join the game, comment, show your support. Uh, we should show the next group stage, by the way. Uh, so in group four, then, we are looking at Germany. Interesting. Teyavaman. Uh, we got Catherine. Oh, yeah, we got both Frances in the next game. So one in, no, what is it? A two in seven chance that we get a France moving through? Macedonia, Tamar, and Hojo. So you got Hojo and you got uh, Germany, both really good civs, and then a bunch of kind of eh civs. I mean, I guess Alexander's okay. France tends to be one of the better civs in the AI only series, but they've not been so good with this AI only series. So, all right, that's gonna start tomorrow. Until then, bye everybody. Okay, really quickly, I did just confirm that the meteors are, or sorry, the comments are actually hitting the coast. The comet actually just hit this tile right here and destroyed a district here and apparently destroyed this one as well. Why does the mercury still show up though? That's weird. But anyways, we know that uh, our XML file adjustment did actually work. So uh, post note, bye.